I think the most underappreciated aspect of Napster and services like it was how it wasn't just good for finding music you were looking for, it was good for finding stuff that you didn't even know you wanted. Not just for new and upcoming artists who would often tag their music with other artists' names as for fans of, but also for more obscure tracks from your favorite artists. I remember coming across Slipknot's indie release with their original vocalist Anders, Made Feet Kill Repeat, and then later on an unreleased demo track for them called Snapstar to make the rounds. And finding these things gave me an appetite for finding other obscure tracks from different bands that I liked. But the thing about these kinds of tracks is that a lot of times they were mislabeled, to the point where they're famously attached to artists who didn't even make them. Take the System of a Down Legend of Zelda song, for instance. Link. Come to town, come to save the Princess Zelda. Of course, you probably know it wasn't actually made by them, and there's a lot of other tracks just like this. So for this episode of Tales from the Internet, I want to take a look at some famous mislabeled Napster MP3s. This video is sponsored by Ridge Wallet. Growing up, I was always that nerd with a big obnoxious trifold wallet just bloating out my front pocket, like I shit my pants so hard it came around to the front. I since solved that problem by getting into smaller, thinner wallets, and of all those kinds of wallets that I've tried, Ridge Wallet is my favorite. Despite its small size, it can hold up to 12 cards and still have room for cash. There's over 30 different colors, and I picked out this nice, festive, tiki one for myself. And I've also had this burnt titanium one, let me make sure I just didn't dox myself, this burnt titanium one for close to two years, I want to say, and it's held up probably better than any other wallet that I've had. And if yours doesn't, each one has a lifetime warranty. As well as free worldwide shipping and returns. And Bridge is so confident that you like it that you can test it out for 45 days, and if you don't like it, you can send it back for a full refund. Just go to ridge.com slash wang or click the link in the description and use code wang for 10% off. Stop all the downloading! It cannot be understated how big of an impact Napster, Winamax, and all the other file sharing services had on my life, and probably a lot of yours. All of a sudden, my music collection isn't just limited to what I can afford to borrow from friends or find on the radio. Now it's anything I want whenever I wanted, and the stuff I didn't even know that I wanted. And one of the biggest examples of this, for me, was J-Rock and Visual K. This became one of my favorite types of music, and I found it completely by accident. At some point, I was looking for some traditional Japanese music for some reason or another, and I accidentally came across the track Silent Jealousy by X Japan who's now one of my favorite bands in the world, probably the best concert I've ever been to in my life, although I didn't get to see them back in the heyday days, I didn't get to see them with Suizo, which was fucking awesome. And after I found them, I fell down this rabbit hole where I was just finding every Japanese band that I could, including Duran Gray, who would also wind up becoming one of my favorite bands. But the thing is, in this early stage, I wasn't downloading entire albums, I was piecing these albums together file by individual file. And there were a few resources at that time, at least ones that I knew about, to really guide me in the right direction. And this lack of a roadmap also made it prime for fake tracks to spread. In particular, there is one track that probably every single person who was a Duran Gray fan at this time was aware of, a track called Sea of Retards. If you don't know, here's how it sounded. <laughs> You wanna know how stupid I am? For years and years, I actually thought that was a real Duran Gray track. I mean, they distinguish themselves from other bands like them with a lot of noisy, uh, dissonant, experimental ideas, so it wouldn't be too far-fetched for them to have something like this. In all likelihood, this track was made by someone making fun of that characteristic of the band, but I guess it fooled enough people. And no one seems to be 100% sure on where it actually came from. A potential origin story that I heard was that someone posted it as a fake leak to troll a J-Rock form. This track makes its way to Napster, labeled as a Duran Gray song, and enough people are tricked by it that for years, a lot of the Western J-Rock fanbase actually thinks this is a real Duran Gray track. I don't know if this is a true story or not, but it's completely believable to me. I can just think back to the culture of these J-Rock forums and how people spoke on there, and I just picture a person writing like a, a five paragraph dissertation on Sea of Retards, 
and why this is actually a very deep and thought-provoking song. There's probably someone out there who actually thought the voice score duh, duh, actually symbolized something, like some kind of fucking allegory. But Justin, we don't care about this weeb shit. Okay, here's another one. How about the Jerky Boys? If you don't know the Jerky Boys, and I feel like some of you might not, and if you don't know them, you should probably go listen to them because they're funny as fuck. But basically, they just put out albums of prank phone calls. I didn't really get into the Jerky Boys until the Napster era, which as someone who grew up in Queens is a little bit of a disgrace, but regardless, their whole discography was there for the taking. The thing is, though, in the way that every parody song at that time would get labeled as being by Weird Al, every prank phone call at the time would get labeled as being from the Jerky Boys. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger's soundboard calls were getting labeled as being from the Jerky Boys. Stop it! I don't stop nothing, you idiot! Stop it! The Jerky Boys were known for pranking people with characters, like the over-the-top New York Guido voice of Frank Rizzo, or the over-the-top New York Jewish voice of Saul Rosenberg. And I wouldn't be surprised if most people of the Napster era's first exposure to the Jerky Boys was an over-the-top Indian voice belonging to a guy named Kerpal. Your daughter come to my house today, uh -huh. and she come on my property, and then she kick my dog, and now my dog needs operation. She kicked her? She kicked! As you probably expected because of the topic of the video, this isn't really the Jerky Boys. Nor was it Tom Green or Adam Sandler who also sometimes were credited with it. But to this day, a lot of people are still convinced that it's the Jerky Boys, and I think a big part of that is just the way this track made its way around the internet. And further muddying the waters was that you had a bunch of other tracks with other Indian dudes being incorrectly labeled as being another Kerpal track or the sequel to Kick My Dog. Some of them were by the same guy, but a lot of them were also radio station pranks and things like that. I'd actually gotten this track through email well before I'd ever seen it on Napster. People kind of sent this track around, kind of like a chain email, and then it would also make its way into sites like Ebombs World, completely uncredited as stuff on Ebombs World often was. There were a few different Flash animations created for it. The earliest and most popular was done by Adam Letalic for Flatplanet.org in 1999. But who actually recorded the pranks originally? It's actually kind of tricky to say for sure. There's a lot of hearsay about this and a lot of unsighted sources that I am not comfortable in confirming 100%. Of the ones that don't still say it's the Jerky Boys, they credit it to Travis Hopkins, a teenager from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada in 1993. Although every source seems to point to this name Travis Hopkins, I have not been able to find any way to positively identify that guy for sure. There used to be a Wikipedia page for this track, which has since been deleted, but looking at the archive might give us some insight into where this came from. According to the Wikipedia article, the prank call was originally distributed on cassette tape in the summer of 1994 in Canada. At some point, somebody digitizes the cassette tape and uploads it and the rest is history. Now the thing is, on this old Wikipedia article, everything making these claims had the label citation needed. And frankly, this is the kind of thing that might have been difficult to have a proper citation to Wikipedia standards. It's kind of a, if you were there, you were there, and you know it by word of mouth kind of thing. I do think, however, that it's extremely likely that this prank call originally circulated as part of a cassette tape that contained a bunch of other prank calls. On Amazon and a bunch of other sources, there's an album entitled Kerpal, You Kicked My Dog. The art depicts the original drawing of Kerpal from the Flash animation, and it contains several tracks, both with Kerpal and other characters, including a character named Purper Sadhu, who is basically Kerpal with a different name. If you listen to the tracks, they're all very clearly performed by the same guy with the same recording quality. And I have no idea if this album has any connection to the original person who recorded it. The fact that the copyright is attributed only to Canada Incorporated to me is evidence that this is just most likely a random person trying to cash in on it, but I don't know for sure. Either way, the consistency across all of the tracks on this album tells me that they did most likely originate from a single source. A source that was very obviously inspired by the Jerky Boys. Hey, it's me from the future, and while I was editing, I gave these tracks another listen, and I'm not as convinced now that they're all the same person and that they all come from the same source, but I do still think there is some consistency among most of these tracks, 
and I do still think that it's likely that they all did come from some sort of uh, independently distributed mixtape. If it does in fact exist, perhaps one of you owned a copy of one of the original Kerpal tapes. If you did, I'd love to know more about it. And finally, probably the most famously mislabeled Napster track, The Legend of Zelda song by System of a Down. Link, here come to town. Now, Surge from System of a Down probably has one of the most distinct voices in that type of music, especially considering the sound of all the other new metal bands that they came around with. And the person who sang the Legend of Zelda song very clearly sounds a lot like Surge. The track was sometimes also labeled as being by Mr. Bungle, but clearly the person on the track sounds like Surge, realistically sounds like a person doing an impression of Surge. And a lot of people really did believe this was System of a Down. And if we listen to this old clip of Loveline from 2002, it's clear that System of a Down got asked about this a lot. In this clip, Shavo knows what this guy is about to ask before he even asks it. Like, listen to it. Zach? Hey, what's going on? You're, uh, 18, what's up? Um, I just want to say, Man Show, it's a great show. Thank you. If you were king, it'd be very cool. Thank you. <laughs> but my question is for System of a Down. Here they are. Okay. Um, my friend, he brought a CD over to my house that was basically a bunch of uh, illegally acquired songs. Uh-huh. And, um... Zelda? The Legend of Zelda theme came Wrong. out here. It's not ours. And he said, this is System of a Down. It's not I was wondering if it was really you. I knew he was going to bring it up. Did you, see, did, you, yeah. did you hear me say Zelda? Okay. Clear it all up. Legend of Zelda song on uh, Morpheus or on Kaza or on any of those download uh, programs is not us. That is not our song. We did not do that. That's someone who is trying to sound like Serge and uh, it's probably some kid in his room with one of those new computer programs writing a track and uh, releasing it as System of a Down. It's not us. The game's cool though. You can tell that at this point he was completely sick of hearing about this song. But despite what Shavo thought about that, the creator of the song had no intention of deceiving anybody about it. People basically just took the song and ran with it. In truth, the site first began to make its way around the internet because of a site called OC Remix. OC Remix, for those of you who don't know, is a spin-off of the old webcomic Overclocked, and it specializes in remixes of video game music. The Legend of Zelda song was posted on OC Remix on February 19th of 2000, and it was credited to a remixer named The Rabbit Joint. In these days, you couldn't upload directly to the site, you had to submit it to the owners for review. They would then evaluate the songs themselves to make sure that they were up to a certain level of quality. OC Remix's founder, DJ Pretzel, loved this song. It was a no-brainer for him to include it in the site, and eventually, because of that, he would be bombarded by people throughout the years who would say, Uh, actually, this song is by System of a Down. To the point where they had to add a note to the upload. Note. This remix is not by System of a Down, as a few hundred of you have written in suggesting, but by the rabbit joint, as indicated. Please don't mail me. I've checked with the rabbit joint and verified with two dozen hardcore fans on Sode's website. The song has been incorrectly labeled as being by Sode by someone who then perpetrated the error by sharing the file on Napster. Case closed. Smiley face. The Rabbit Joint was actually one of several musical projects by a musician named Joe Plyman. Joe had been writing music since his childhood and had a bunch of other projects such as Summer Villains and Hip Tanaka, which is a reference to a composer who you might be familiar with from games such as Metroid, Super Mario Land, and Earthbound. And in addition to music, Joe also worked as a professional sound designer, even receiving an Emmy nomination for his work on the PBS program Word Girl. So although he never got the credit he deserved for writing such a famous song, he did go on to have a very successful career. But anyway, that wraps up this batch of mislabeled Napster songs. If you have any other tracks like this that you're wondering about, let me know. And if you like this video, you'll probably also like my video about the Star Wars kid who also made his way around the internet through file sharing programs. I'm out.